It's a terrible and ugly, hideous day. So, what are we going to do? We're gonna go on a journey back in time. We're gonna we're gonna go to the park where I spend the day with Timmy or Tim, I believe that's his name. And uh, this is basically the day where I realize that I want the pocket instead of the boxer. So enjoy. We're gonna be just looking at some stuff. I'm trying out the baby ape. I'm trying the AOS 3.5. Yeah. <coughs> and <laughs> and um, we're very different. Like he he likes his settings so much more different than mine. I'm gonna talk about that in the videos. Maybe I'll cut them up a bit. Maybe I'll just like talk about the flight. I don't know. Cause if I cut it up, then it doesn't really show how it flies, but we're going to dive deep into that. We're going to talk about all of that. Smack that subscribe button. If it's not smacked, smack it and smack the like button too. Just smack it. Okay. There's like 6,000 of you that come and hang out with me and you return. There's like more than that watching, but there's 6,000 of you that come and spend time with me. So please, just smash the subscribe button. It helps me. It costs you nothing, but means the world to me. So make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit that like button, okay? Enjoy. I'm going to bother you about it until we have 6,000 subscribers, okay? So bloody just make it happen. Like, come on. We're doing a crazy review. We're gonna test out the baby ape. We're gonna test out the boxer. We're gonna test out everything. Where's that other one? The pocket? We gotta see what this stuff feels like. And uh, yep. yes. A AOS three and a half frame, <laughs> Speedy B, ELRS, uh, got an EP2 in there with a little tower on it. So there's no, no uh, RX antenna sticking anywhere. Let me turn it on first, that would help. I remember the song now. Right. Uh, it starts with I'm going to use this to record. Okay. Then you have the diopters? Right yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah. you can adjust the spacing. You know they're fine, they're fine. Okay. Okay, the boxer, full gimbals, interesting. Never, I've never tried this before. So. Oh, hold, hold down the momentary on the right. Okay. There you go, you got and it. And then I can You're, let go? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How much expo's on here? Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, okay, so you're like, your roll is sensitive, but your mid sticks are like loose. Yeah. I really feel like the, the difference between the top and bottom. Yeah. Like when it's... Uh, I, li I like having that fine control, yeah. and then I like to be able to like, you know, send it full tilt when I want to, but... I got real, for me, I got big, big thumbs. I thumb it and, uh, I thumb too, but yeah, yeah, there's a lot more, I guess, space in here. Like see for mine, all the movements are in the area that yours don't move. Yeah. Well they do. It's fine adjustment. And then, uh, yeah, it flies nice. Yeah. Try some off throttle. Try, try some like, uh, like power loop and float it. See how that feels like. I try try fling it up and just just get some float and see how long it hangs there. <laughs> yeah, we're just our styles are so different. I think. Yeah, it's crazy how different everyone's style is, right? Yeah, I feel like it drifts quite a bit too. There's so much tension too. I like mine so loose. I keep it loose on the throttle, but a bit of tension ever else because I don't want to. Like instead of, I don't like inadvertently yawing and stuff when I'm trying See, to yeah, like, do fast like throttle stuff. Loose, I feel like, like I feel like I'm fighting it, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't like to fight the sticks, I like them to kind of just go with me. So this is my first time trying out the AOS 3.5. Uh, <laughs> first things first, a little bit of rain and I don't know, the um, the mount is kind of taking away a bit of the view, which I don't very like, but I checked some of the other videos and it doesn't seem to be a problem. So it may have just been Tim's mount. So just uh, first impressions, like flying it around, I noticed that, yeah, like I can see why people like it in the sense that it is pretty solid. But if you've flown a lot of uh, different drones and let's say like whoops, and you've 
tested a fractal and know the way that a fractal flies compared to a regular whoop, it's kind of like when you're flying normal or steady, it flies very well and solid. But then when it comes to like turns and stuff, you can really kind of feel the weight. It's like it likes to be right side up. And I personally prefer having something that feels a bit more fluid. I like when it turns and does stuff that you don't feel the weight that much. Like this still, it did feel solid. So it also bothers me that it's pretty heavy. So this is, I think, about a 50 gram frame. And just, just knowing like that I designed a discus to be exactly how I like it. You see with this, there's also the, um, like, like the wobble and the, the drifting. So I felt like it drifted quite a bit and it w wobbled like, it, like it didn't want to like track as well, but it was locked in. Like when you turn and stuff, it, it stops like quickly, like it's responsive like that. Like you see the way it'll just kind of stop on a dime and that is nice, but I really kind of feel the weight from top to bottom. And it's, it's a hard thing to explain if, if you haven't flown a pile of things. But th this is my problem with most drones on the market, that I just feel they're oversized, they're overly heavy, and when you move, they're not as fluid. And this one also, I think, because of the weight. And it just, it, it, it slides a bit. Like, it, you have a bit of um, weight that kind of, has you like drifting in the air a bit. So, it keeps going. <laughs> um, yeah, this was, this was last summer. So I made this video and I wanted to talk about all the things I got to test, but I just didn't uh, end up getting it up. We got really poopy rainy weather today, so not going outside, not flying, not making more content. So I got all this old content to get out for you. It is always fun to try different things. And the other thing is that Timmy or Tim has very different settings than mine. So his gimbals are uh, pretty tight. And it was interesting to get the chance to try out the boxer and the pocket and this day was literally what made me decide on getting the uh, pocket because I just loved the way the pocket feel felt I liked it a lot more than the way that the boxer felt even though the boxer is solid it's a lot bigger than I even thought it would be and I'm trying to like fly around and get used to it but all of the sensitivity is on the outer part of his sticks so I'm used to having sensitivity on the inside of my sticks which to me i feel like it just gives me more control sudden control right away but tim tried mine and he felt like it was twitchy and to me it wasn't twitchy it was responsive <laughs> but then to uh to tim you know everyone views things differently <laughs> nice can i try that other one the little guy Sure, the, the baby ape? Yeah, let's just get it done. Okay, so we're doing the uh, the baby ape. We're trying this out. 200 milliwatts, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's do it. Woo! A little toothpick. See, this is more sensitive in the inside, I feel, already than the other one. Woo! Is, is this the stock camera on it? Yep. The one that like is zoomed in kind of? There's two versions this of, of the original. This isn't the pro, this isn't the new pro baby ape. It's the original baby ape, but it's the, do they call it the pro or the, whatever, Ooh. deluxe or something. It's got, it's got a decent camera. It has the, uh, the ant? Yeah, it has, it has the Caddx uh, camera on there, but uh, as opposed to their one, which was supposed to be brutal. But uh, for me, just goofing around at that work in the field, this thing's perfect. It's definitely. No, no, it's not as good. The VTX is a little shoddy. Frame is surprisingly solid. Because it's so light, I've smashed it into things pretty hard and I haven't actually broken the frame yet. The motors are like no name, who knows what the hell they are motors, but I use, I use this thing every day and it's 
held up. And the, and the battery lasts a long time because, you know, not much power on this thing. It just keeps going. <laughs> yeah, I think for what it is, the price of it, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. The motors, I think they're like five buck replacement motors. I got a bunch of them. I've never needed one, but it's, it's just all ludicrously cheap. It's kind of scary. I showed it to the guys at uh, the Rotor Geeks and they just kind of shrugged and were like, oh man, how could we compete? Oh, I didn't get to try the pocket. <laughs> well, you, can, you can try the pocket. I want to try that little pocket thing. The radio. Yeah, you got it with the whole metal gimbals and everything. Oh, else. yeah. And then these, I just got Which pocket? You can't really shorten it, huh? You can, oh yeah. Yeah, no, there's, there's a, uh, you can back off the bottom and you can, you can go up and down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I like it short and loose. <laughs> nubbies. Short, loose nubbies. Okay, so here we go. Maiden flight on the baby ape. I think baby ape <laughs> freestyle this is the uh, original one so it's not um, it's not the uh, fancier one I don't I forget if he changed the camera to make the camera a bit better or is has the upgraded camera but I was pretty pleasantly surprised by this like it's a super cheap drone and you, you can already tell it's kind of got I don't know if it's shaking or if it's just because the uh, the video is bloody shaking. So it's a little unnerving. But I I liked the way that... <laughs> like, here's the thing. If you took the electronics that were on the AOS 3.5 and you put them on this frame, it, it would fly better than the AOS just in the way that it's more balanced. So Chris Rosser talks about... Um, I, see, usually I could fly through that hole, but I wasn't feeling very confident with this. But, okay, so Chris Rosser will talk about the resonance of a frame and, like, how getting out the vibrations and whatever. And to me, more important than that is the balance. When a frame has balance, it's going gonna, it's gonna to move better. And I'm telling you, I bet you this frame has worse resonance than the AO3 because it's like a $10 frame, if that. But the way that it moves is going to be better. Like, it's just easier to turn and flick around. It's more balanced in that way. So if you just took this same frame and just made it more solid, maybe wasn't... um Make it, made it one piece? Because that's the other thing. With little drones, when you're looking at three inches... A one-piece drone is going to have less resonation, at least to me, than a drone where you're screwing all these pieces together. Because, yeah, when you have all the pieces together, the adjustable arms, all these things, screws can get loose, things can get shaky. So if they're all screwed up tightly and they're all wedged in perfectly, then, yeah, you'll have a drone that is performing better. But when you have it on one piece, like a three to four millimeter one-piece carbon a three inch to 3.5 you're not going to be getting a lot of like shakes and resonance out of it because the arms are so short so you don't have these big heavy motors you don't have all that weight whereas you look at a five inch it's different it's longer arms heavier motors bigger parts more um tension from motor to motor when you look at the shorter frames you don't have as many of those problems you have you have different types of vibrations. I, I don't really like understand it enough to explain it all, but there's like the high pitch and the low pitch. So you get the other end of those vibrations. But yeah, we're just, this is literally like the cheapest drone you can get. And I personally never got one of these just because I just like having, I like having better pieces like I kind of want to buy the cheapest most expensive thing that I can buy just a sec okay we're flying again another pack so I personally like to buy the the like the best bang for your buck 
So let's say there's two TVs. One is a Sony TV. One is another TV that has all the other, like works just as well as the Sony TV. Like I have no need to go and get the name brand. Like I'd rather find that thing that does the job. Same thing with like a pair of jeans or a jacket. You know, you can buy jeans that are like $300 and then you can buy jeans at blue notes for ten dollars and i went through a period of life where i used to buy designer clothes and i'd save all my money and i didn't have like i wasn't i lived in a tiny room by myself and i would save up my money and i would buy these like hundred dollar jeans every year i'd get a pair of rock and republics or lindenbergs or like i'd buy these fancy jeans and then after 10 years i got 10 pairs of expensive fancy jeans <laughs> And, you know, over time, those jeans would fall apart and I get a pair of Levi's or a $10 pair of jeans and those things would bloody last me forever. So to me, paying money for the name brand or for whatever has never really appealed to me. I've always cared more about the performance. At the same time, I don't want to buy something that's just kind of cheap. Like, I just feel like the motors and electronics on this are just not good enough like they're they're definitely going to be fun they're going to be fun for the regular user but to me the whole point of fpv is to be connected and i really want to be connected to my drone and when you have like a tune that's twitchy and electronics that are twitchy and video that's twitchy and motors that are twitchy it just takes that joy away from me now if it's just about you know that experience just being able to fly la 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 have some fun great but i want it to be that when i'm flying my drone it's like me in a formula one car compared to the regular someone's driving a civic and yes a civic is good it's reliable but you just you can't compare that to a formula one car like the formula one car is light it has all that engineering and yeah it's the most expensive of them all so what can we find like in between we can we can get a we can get one of those rice rockets and we can modify a honda until it's basically you know not as expensive as the ferrari but the best performance you can get out of like a vehicle that you can take on the roads you know and then there's going to be people that enjoy the mustangs they like that torque they like that raw power and then there's other people that like a miata and the miata doesn't have that power or an rx7 and it doesn't have that power but it revs and it just takes turns there's so many different things that you can tweak and modify when it comes to fpv and that's what i think i love so much about it that's what is so addicting about it is once you learn all these things, you know, first I learned about, uh, I guess, frames. Then I'm learning about FCs and I'm learning about ESCs. And I'm starting to like see how all of these different components affect your flight characteristics and your drones. Now it is. Oh, focus. There we go. Nice. I'm recording you. Where, where's the pre-arm? The pre-arm is the, the lower. This. Yeah, that, that's okay, pre-arm. You got it? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I wish it was, that's but it's not. That's the pre-arm? So, yeah, so you use one finger to pre-arm, oh. and then click that. And now we're... Okay. <laughs> I might like the pocket more than the uh, boxer. Yeah, I like these little guys. I have to be careful not to push the arm button. <laughs> The other radios have the, the momentary. Okay, here we are, the final flight. So now this time I'm actually using the pocket. And I, I really like it. It already just feels better. Because even though like his settings are uh, more like less sensitive than mine, these sticks move quicker because there's less throw. Like the, there's less distance for them to travel. So it's easier for me to really uh, spin them all the way. So now I get a better... Uh, experience and I'm back on the AOS 3.5 but just I don't know if you can see the way I can really understand the way a drone moves when watching these videos and when I started I watched every single video online like all the drones all the flight videos and you can tell a lot about a drone without even flying it just by the way it moves by just seeing 
the way that it flows. And most of the time, like see when we're not stabilized and we're looking at the feed, when you watch a drone turn and when you watch the drone move, you'll see like shakes, you'll see the weight, you'll see the way that it carries the weight. And that has been kind of my largest obsession to have something that carries the weight fluidly. So when it turns like that was a nice turn, but when, when this one specifically, like when it comes out of the turn, there's like that weight that it kind of has to catch or stop the momentum. Whereas on the discus, when it turns, it doesn't have as much weight. It's way lighter. So it just turns like a circle as opposed to a pancake, if that makes sense. Like see on that turn, the weight being kind of like lugged around. And then to make it worse is every reviewer tests out these drones and they put the heaviest battery they can put on it, like an 850 or a 900 or a thousand. And <laughs> it's just, that's not how these kind of fly the best. They can be thrown around in a way. And like, for instance, if, if you throw this one into the air and do like an inverted yaw, like in that like in that scenario, it's, it's better, but just the way that it tracks and moves, like when I turn, it starts to like slide to the side. Whereas like, if I want to go through a hole like that, I have to keep it really steady. What are you waiting for? Do it. Just do it. Yes, you can just do it. It doesn't really do it for me. Linked at the end of this video, you're going to see just a flight from the discus in my like more powerful configuration and just look at the way that it moves and see if you can tell the difference. Okay. Oh, <laughs> we're back. Okay. We're back in the air. whoop de doo da day. <laughs> I don't really know what to say anymore, but thank you for uh, hanging out with me. It's not over yet. Uh, let's just like, just keep, keep watching what's going on. Yeah, so he's also flying at about, I think, like, he has a 15 degree angle. And lately I fly usually, like, 30. Like, I don't know. I've been flying, like, 20 on my, like, filming thing. So, like, if I have a GoPro, I want to be flying at, like, 20. Because I, I want to be able to slow down and get, like, nice video. Then recreationally, I think I like 30 the most. And in racing, I like 45. I'm still going to make a video about camera angles and how they affect you and how you should use them. Cause I think people get caught up just also using one angle and being stuck to that. And I think that your camera angle is a tool that you can use according to what you're trying to do. Same thing with p taking pictures with a camera, you know, like you have a portrait lens, you have your street lens, you have wide lens, you have your close lens. You like, you have the different tools for different things. And people get so caught up in just being stuck to one thing. And if you think that way, you're never really going to improve. Now, see see me trying to bloody orbit this thing and how the weight is there. Like, it, it's, it's, it's hard to uh, carry that weight through. It, it doesn't give you that nice fluid movement because you're flying a pancake instead of a tennis ball. <laughs> <laughs> the top bottom heaviness. I don't know if you if you understand that, but yeah. You like it? Yeah, it's funny. Everyone's a different. Wow, that feels like millimeters. And these gimbals are small, eh? Yeah. Oof. Hey guys. Okay, I don't feel comfortable flying around people with this. <laughs> I really don't. Hey just go slow, like don't pitch yeah. forward, right? Yeah. Like if you just go kind of straight. That doesn't feel like 45 though. That feels way. It is. Yeah. It feels so I'm fast. I'm looking fast and I can see ground fine. Yeah. If I set mine 45, I'm not seeing anything. I'm like looking at the sky. Like this is, yeah. I can still see fine. Yeah, wow, it's amazing, man. Different setups just feel so different. How does it feel? Like small and twitchy. Because <laughs> it's sensitive? It's the gimbals are tiny. I mean, I'm used to the little gimbals on my, on my, with all your kids around. I don't want to hit anybody. I know it's a yeah. small quad, but still. Don't my goal is not to hit people. It. No, I just, this will, I want to bring it in now. This yeah. was really tiny to me. Congratulations, you made it to the bonus content. So later that day, I took my discuses to another park. These, I have two 
setups that I usually fly. One is with the 1404s, which you're seeing now, and then the other one is the 1504s. And the 1404s, I get like 10 minute flight times, and then the 1504s, I get like five minute flight times, minus a couple minutes if I'm really ripping it. But now you see here what I discovered, or the interesting discovery of this video is, I took off the battery strap and I put on like a 3D printed mount for the battery. And just from doing that, I have all these bloody lines in the video and it's messy and disgusting and ugly and distracting. And uh, it just came from just removing the battery strap. So I'm just wondering if the battery strap in between the ESCs and the carbon, like if it like insulates it or it does something, because I literally just took the battery strap off, put a print, and now the picture is horrible. If you understand what's going on, let me know in the comments. And now here we are on my favorite setup, my 1504.5 discus, and you can just see the way that it moves. And this was last summer, so uh, I don't know. I get into grooves where I fly a lot and I feel like I'm better, and then other times I kind of like lose it. But it's the same day, and you can just see the way that the discus moves. Like it's just, I'm also, I have higher rates and, um, I don't know, 45 degree angle. So it just, it feels so much faster. And w when you do the turn, like, see, I can't get that weight to really disturb me. And I may still be flying at that time, 850s. Cause now I like flying 650s. I just feel like with a 650, I get better uh, performance. Like I just have more speed, more control, a little bit less flight time, but not even, I still have really good flight times just see the way it just moves i just feel like it has so much more like authority and like aggressiveness and i point it somewhere and it goes there it doesn't start like wobbling away from me if i want to hit a gap i can just point and it'll go there and that could be also from the 45 degree angle when you're flying with more of an angle all you have to do is kind of like steer you don't have to bother with pitching as much and when you have less of an angle, it's like you have to kind of build your momentum by either like throttling up or like lifting yourself up in the sky, dropping down and then kind of steering somewhere, like making yourself go that way. You kind of have to pull yourself with the uh, throttle. Whereas when you have the higher angle, you're automatically like kind of moving straight. So it makes things a little bit easier. This is probably one of my favorite places I guess to practice because there's all the trees so trying to do little like flips and spins inside the trees is fun because it teaches you to have I guess better throttle control but see the way I'm just like going around and doing like orbits and stuff it just it's way more fluid and smooth I'm not that fluid and smooth yet but we're getting there and I, I like I just I wouldn't have been able to move the AOS like this so <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I don't like, I don't hate Chris Ross or anything. I just really disagree with um, his drone design and ideals, I think, in that way. I just, I, I can't see how a 50 gram drone can compare to a 25 gram drone. Uh, it's just too much weight and not enough center of gravity, more focus on just being like, I guess, bulky and ugly <laughs> i'm the worst okay i'll stop now uh make sure you smash that like button and uh don't don't share this with your friends that like aos okay smoochy smoochy